Hello there and welcome back to another review. So today I thought I'd mix things up a little bit. I've reviewed quite a lot of Kung Fu movies in the past, largely Sammo Hung's, Jackie Chan's, but I thought we'd venture out a little bit today to try and tackle some more um, other Kung Fu movies that are a bit more left field, um, ones that you know, sometimes forgotten about or cult kung fu movies or kung fu movies sort of that are under the radar or sometimes overshadowed by sort of the bigger kung fu movies like The Drunken Master or something like that. As I say, go a bit less field. Not obvious classic classics, but movies every person who's ser sort of serious about getting into kung fu movies should definitely check out. So I thought a Wilson Tong movie is sort of a really good place to start. I know I've looked at sort of the Joseph Kyo's and there's been a couple of other kung fu movies, but by and large it has been either Yun Bu's, Jackie Chan's, Corey Yun's, a couple of Jet Li's thrown in there. There's loads of other Jet Li's I've got to do. Um, but I thought Wilson Tong, Wilson Tong movie would be a great place to start. Wilson was another guy who cut his teeth at the Shaw Brothers studio and has been in loads of movies, most notably as the guy with the awesome footwork in The Victim uh, by Sammo Hung, which I bit, will be reviewing very, very soon because it's an all-time favourite of mine. See, the Sammo's just keep on coming, don't they? No matter what, how many films I do, no matter how many Kung Fu movies I do, there will still be some Sammo's going on. The guy, as I say, absolutely loves Sammo Hung. There's going to be loads more Samos to come, even though it feels like I've done them, like I've done a vast majority of them. There's still loads, loads more Kung Fu uh, from Samo to do. But yeah, Wilson Tong, if you've seen The Victim with Brian Lung Kai Yan, you'll, re you'll remember the guy and uh, the, the, I'm talking about in Wilson Tong, uh, as I say, with his footwork at the end. But he was also in films like Dagger, Dagger's A, he was in Kung Fu Genius, and usually working as a fight choreographer in films like Snake in the Monkey's Shadow as well. And if you talk to any massive Kung Fu fan, and I mean, they should know who Wilson Tong is, right? Wilson Tong is, like I've mentioned in slides sort of with John Liu, Wilson Tong is another one. Like, he's one of the guys, right? He's one of the dudes that you must check out, sort of, if you are getting into Kung Fu. Um, now, this movie, I remember, Snake Deadly Act, I haven't even mentioned what I'm reviewing yet, but yeah, Snake Deadly Act, I remember having on VHS... Um, you know, and it was from Eastern Heroes, and they really plugged this film, right? They really marketed the hell out of this when it was released. Like, it was super rare, and it was the deadliest kung fu movie ever, and it was the full uncut version. Um, and there was a real bit of hype, even just the video cassette. There's a real sort of, oh, I've got to check, it's like the deadliest kung fu movie ever. It's like super rare, and it's uncut, and it's something I've got to check out. Um, now, in terms of Wilson Tong movies, this is definitely one worth checking out. The plot, you could argue, is by the numbers, but we get a great cast in this one from Wilson Tong. We get Fong Hak on here, Angela Mao, Philip Cow, even Bolo is in this movie. So there's a lot going on with Snake Deadly Act, and there are not many movies that have lobster style. Right? There's not many movies, kung fu movies, where you can say, oh, that's the one with lobster style. Well, that's exactly what Snake Deadly Act is. I mean, when you have Fong Hak on and Wilson Tong involved, you know you're going to be pretty much taken care of in terms of fight choreography, and uh, these two guys don't disappoint here. I really wish Eureka or 88 Films would release like a Wilson Tong box set, as this guy is often overlooked and often overshadowed by people like I mentioned, you know, like Samo, Yun Wu Ping, and Lung Ka Yang. Uh, Lung Ka Lung, sorry. Um, but he's one of the he's one of the old school guys, if you know what I mean. When I say he's one of the guys, I mean he's one of the old school. He's one of he's one of the people, like I say, probably overshadowed um, by some of his contemporaries, but. There's a lot to be said for Wilson Tong. Um, he's a very important figure in the Kung Fu industry in the late 70s. In, if you've seen any, well, if you've seen a handful of Shaw Brothers movies, more you probably will have seen uh, Wilson Tong. Um, you will know, you will know the guy. Um, M. Quan, uh, M. Quan Long, our lead here, plays, I think that's how you say his name. He plays sort of the student role and is our hero, Chung. Um, I mean, though he does a fine job here, I really don't know much about him to comment. That's why I'm not even sure if I've said his name, name right. Um, unfortunately, I don't know enough about our lead here to comment on his background or other films he has done. So some of you out there might know what else he has been on. So if any of you do know uh, what he's been in, so if any of you do know, uh, be sure to leave in the comments below. So the film just the film starts with Fong Hak on as Yu Yi and Wilson Tong as Master Kyo facing off each other in a field. You don't get much simpler than that. They're just facing off each other. You know they're going to fight. They do fight. We have no idea why they're giving these evil looks at each other, but the odds are they're going to fight, and they do. What you will notice right away is how fast and fluid the choreography is. We don't need to know why they are fighting, but it's a great way to open the movie. It just kicks the action off like right away. 
So it turns out Kyo, Kyo raped the guy's wife, but Fong Hakong's character also raped in the past too. So this, they're sort of we're watching basically a pair of rapists fight. Is what, is what we're watching here. We're watching a pair of rapists fight, and after a great showdown between the two, Yu Yu gets beat and vows revenge. And I can't stress like stress enough. If you're into some of the sort of like the old school kung fu movies, and you've done all the Jackies, the Samos, the Shaw Brothers, the Yun Wu Pings, please go and check out some Wilson Tongs, as the guy's very underrated and was such an important figure in the genre like much like john lou like once you've exhausted all the big ones all the big guys make sure to check out some john lou make sure to check out some wilson tong and you'll see some very sort of under the radar but sort of still very solid uh kung fu movies so we fast forward several years and Kyo is like an old man and respected about town offering food to those in need usually in a kung fu movie when a guy is respected um like like this you, you know damn well they're covering for something now, like if a guy is sort of too nice or he's got this reputation about town and he's well respected and these kind of things usually more often than not he's hiding something he's got some skeletons in his closet you know damn well he's covering up for something so we have our chung his son and fong ha kong's character is now like a simple beggar he pretends to fall at one point to get Chung's sympathy to see like his uh, Wilson Tong's son knows Kung Fu. Um, though why he's waited this long to test him and go after Ko and family, I have no idea. Like he, he could, I mean, if his son's grown up and they're sort of both elderly men now, why has he taken this long to sort of go after him? I mean, couldn't he have just had a couple of years training then gone after him? But anyway... Maybe it's just taken him this long to sort of perfect his Kung Fu or something, I don't know. So we just get a lot of scenes thrown together for maybe two thirds of the movies, and that's no bad thing, because by and large, that's sort of how most Kung Fu movies are, um, it, especially even Yun Wu Ping, um, so guilty of this. Like, um, usually, the first, especially the first third, but sometimes even the first two thirds of a Kung Fu movie, a lot of the time it is just filler. A lot of the time it's either a, a fight in the market because a guy doesn't want to pay, pay for this jade he just bought or there's like um, sort of a showdown at a tea house or something like that. It's always it's, a lot of the times it is just filler, and that's what happens here. So we get a lot of scenes thrown together. So, like I mentioned, for maybe two around two thirds um, of the movie, and it's and it is a bit talky in places. Uh, Chung sa saves his girl from some hoodlums, one of which goes on to do this guy goes to do drunken style at one point. The whole time Yu Yi is watching uh, Fong Akon sort of keeping his eye on him. So we find out the girl's dad is a gambler and in lots of debt, hence why these guys want her. We then have the ever-lovely and ever-talented Angela Mao in only a small role, um, but a very welcome scene. St I've probably She does steal the film, I think, completely, Angela Mao. Um, she, as I say, when she's on, she's not in it a lot, but she does have a presence, Angela Mao. Um, and here, you know, it, it was great that Wilson Tong got her, got her in here. So it's a scene steely moment, um, you know, she basically runs the brothel and Chung pays her a visit as he wants her to release the girl that he's just helped. And we get to see Angela Mao do some sword style in a spectacular fashion. Suddenly Fong Hakon turns up with his fan to aid Chung. Um, nice fight scene, especially Fong Hakon fighting Angela Mao. Um, <clears throat> you know, Fong Hakon usually sort of... Um, he's always the villain he's he's more often than not always a villain if fong hakon is a good guy in a kung fu movie then some is wrong right you know he's the villain in warriors 2 he was the villain in magnificent butcher he was the villain in iron fisted monk he was the villain in police story and here sort of like i say he's still doing his whole villain thing going on so Fong wins the duel and he's like, Master Kyo, she's all yours. Um, so Philip Kyo plays Chung's teacher and they confront him about a woman be beating him at Kung Fu. And I'm pretty sure Peter Chan is in this part of the movie too, if I recall. So Ah Chung is a skilled fighter. He's a skilled fighter, but he's just not overly competent, right? He's, he knows some stuff, but he's not exactly proficient, so to speak. Um even going so far as to get his teachers to dress like women so he can beat them up, as he said he can beat ten women. Then Bolo makes an appearance, as you as you've guessed, he's probably he's a um, he's a street performer, a uh, street performer, and him and his buddy are claiming that he's sort of indestructible, uh, getting the public to pay to use pipes on him, etc., and things like that. Uh, have Kang Ye Cheng here as a hustler, saying they owe him like sort of protection money. And you remember this guy, if I 
pronounce his name right, I'm probably saying it wrong, but he was the he was in loads of kung fu movies, um, most notably sort of like Dragon Lord, he was in Young Master, he was also in Boxer from Shantung. And it's quite cool with this movie that, you know, you got Bolo, you got Angela Mao, you got two people that were in Enter the Dragon in this movie as well, which has got a nice little touch there. So he claims even like the police obey him, um, you know, uh, Kang Yu Chang. Um, they don't really, of course. He's just basically just a swindler, right? He's just up to no good. So his trick is he wants Bolo to pull his hands apart as they stand close to him, then having to use one finger to get a coin out from a glass. He does say he's just got these little swindles that he does to just try and get one over on these people. <clears throat> um, then Ah Chung, being the do-gooder that he is, confronts him about conning people and he's able to pull his hands apart with these. And he's like, wait a second, you were there and saw what I did? Well, obviously, as he knows you've, you know, he, he says outright, you've been conning people. And he's like, what, Do, you know, you were there. It's like, of course he was there. He saw you conning the people. So following on from the bolo, you know, but the film, it, it, you know, on from the bolo, but the film does come to a bit of a standstill as our chung wants to help him gamble. Following on from the bolo scenes, what I was trying to say, um, where after the bolo scene, it's, it's got a bit of pace. Then it does slow down when they sort of go gambling. Um, it does go to a bit of a snazzy. As I say, it is a bit talky in places, but when the kung, it's one of the movies that when the kung fu happens, though, and the fight choreography does happen, it's great. It's really fantastic, and it's worth sticking around with this movie. It's worth watching it, um, just because, let's say, when the fight happens, it's really inventive stuff. It does cut a few corners, this film, in places, but it's not a bad kung fu film by any stretch of the imagination. So, um, so I go to this gamble. So where Fong Hak on the girl and Wilson Tong are at this point of the movie is anyone's guess. Like they've just gone right out the window. Like that whole plot and everything is totally irrelevant. He's just got a Chung and this swindler, like this hustler guy, just going to gamble. So as the as always, the guys at these casinos are cheating, and Chung wants to teach them a lesson. Suddenly, Fong is there, Yu Yi watching the background randomly. Though at this stage, he is now in fancy red clothes, and he's not in his beggar clothes. Like one minute he's a beggar, and then he's dressed quite smart. And Fong Hakon's hair does change lengths considerably in some scenes throughout. Um, but yeah, he's got these really dapper red clothes on, but he's not in his beggar clothes. So I guess he can dress sort of smart when he has to. And he takes on Chen Wei Man's casino's boss to help our Chung. So basically, all it is is that he's just helped him out with a few scraps to basically earn his trust. That's all that's sort of happening here. Because I say, our Chung's a bit of a do-gooder, doesn't like injustice happening. Fong Hakon is sort of keeping his eye on him, helped him out with a few little pickles that he's getting himself in, a few little scrapes, and he's basically just earning his trust. Then we will. Then we see Wilson Tong holding a lobster and then practicing his lobster style. Uh, yeah, really, there is lobster style in this movie, and it's based, as I say, it's worth checking out for that alone. If you're one of these people that watches kung fu movies to see the different styles, and you got fed up with snake and crane and dragon and tiger and mantis, check this out because you get lobster. So Yu Yi takes Chung back to his shack and very much like a drunken master set up here. And Fong, ha, ha, he's like back now in his full beggar mode. Of course, what happens when you meet someone new in these movies? You test each other's kung fu. That's what happens. You just get introduced somebody to somebody new. You have to test their kung fu, of course. Um, Fong doesn't use his hands and he's able to beat Chung. Um, I do like when Chung goes to offer him a bowl, something to drink, so he'll be his master like they do in most kung fu movies. And Fong Hakon is like, that's old garbage. I do like that line because the amount of kung fu movies where you have the student offering the teacher a drink or he's kowtowing to him, he's bowing down, offering him a drink so he'll be accepted. Here, Fong Hakon's character just like, he just sort of says, that's old garbage. Like, nobody does that anymore. So he agrees to take Chung as his student on the one condition he always does what he says. Chung begins practicing snake style with bricks tied to his arms and has to pierce like a piece of paper. And by the way, if you watch this movie, take notice of how many times Fong Hakon's hair, like I say, his hair changes in length. As it, it does happen a lot. And I don't mean, oh, his hair was short there, now it's long. It happens continuously throughout the production of this movie. One minute, it's like super long, then it's short. And it's because Fong Hakon's hair is like sort of, He's got loads of it anyway. As I say, it's obviously was shot out of sync. They're all doing other moves. You know, shoot, probably shooting upwards of three to four movies at a time. So we can forgive that. Um, for some reason, they keep coming back to Wilson Tong doing this training. And it's that's fine, cutting back to Wilson Tong doing his training, doing his lobster style, doing that. 
but they repeat the same footage um, with this like mad dis like disorientating music. Um, unfortunately, um, why they couldn't vary up what Wilson Tong's doing? I know Wilson Tong's directed this, but surely they could have included a bit more of his training or fleshed his character out a bit. He's at the start and he doesn't really come into it. I know he's directing, as I say, but it would have been nice if we did get to see more of Tong, uh, especially doing his um, training. So what quite what is quite cool is Yu Yi also teaches him the footwork of drunken style, um, and it and it take a bit it does take a bit of hit um, to, a bit of a hit a drunken master. It's like you don't need to get drunk to do drunken style. Um, so it's sort of like I say, even his shack is sort of a sort of a Sam Seed setup. Um, so for the training for this is Chung standing in this bamboo contraction uh, with spikes and nails coming out of it. He's like, but you might cripple me, and he goes, well that's your problem. Which you know, you know, he's standing in the middle of this like device uh, with all these spikes and God knows what coming out of it. It's like, well, you know, you get crippled. That's your problem. We see Wilson Tong training again, and I love how Chung obviously isn't worried about his day, like his dad wondering where he is. Um, Chung is, like I say, he's just gone off, and he's not worried that his dad might be concerned where he is or anything like that. So some valuables get stolen uh, in town. A new year goes to Chung. I think it was your father's student, uh, Philip Cowell's character, and sends Chung back to sort of spy on him. How he knows this, I have no idea. He's just stirring up trouble. He's just stirring up some trouble. He does indeed find the thieves, though it's at night and their faces are hidden, uses some of his new kung fu skills. One of them, he thinks, is Philip Cowell, the housekeeper, who after running off without the antiques, he goes to pay him a visit and he pretends he has been asleep. The whole idea is he says he has never known kung fu, so Chung keeps testing him. Next thing we know, he is waiting for our Chung mast in the, fo like, in the forest. After Chung beats the crap out of him and eventually kills him, he reveals him his last breath that it was someone sort of put him up to doing this it wasn't sort of his own incentive like um he was put up to doing it and it, he didn't want to do it we learn that he never saw the guy who was the mastermind but he always left messages through the temple so they do try to inject some mystery here there is an element of you know like i mentioned in a lot of kung fu movies sometimes there's no plot sometimes until about the last half hour the last 30 minutes or so last 30 35 minutes so they do try and inject some mystery here about this this mastermind who sort of set up this robbery and um it doesn't make all that much sense this film but it's okay it's you know i'm not gonna pick it apart you know uh within an inch of its life so they do inject some mystery as well as comedy and of course kung fu Chung goes to investigate and finds a message between sort of three incense sticks. And of course it is his father, Master Kyo, who is the culprit and was trying to hide his dirty business, as he calls it. It's his dirty business. Wilson's role in this is actually, like I mentioned, very minimal. Uh, he, he says he likes being a thief and whoever opposes him must die. This is his whole, <laughs> his whole I like being a thief, you must die. Um, the, the prosthetics and makeup they use on Wilson Tong to make him look older actually don't look too bad. I think they actually look quite cool. So he wants to know how Ah Chung knows snake style, and watch the camera work too when um, father and son fight. Um, it's sort of like, um, you know, he doesn't Wilson doesn't always keep it super tight. Like he pans around the fighters a few times, which sort of breaks it up a bit. He's not sort of up close and tight and personal all the time. He's doing sort of some wide panning shots as they're fighting. Okay, it's nothing out of the ordinary, but it does look quite cool when it's done here, and it does um, serve the fight really well does break it up good angles used and just shows that wilson tong could easily direct a fight scene as well then he reveals his lobster style and gets his sung chung trapped then fong turns up and so begins like a two versus one battle with them both taking on master kyo and it really is great fun stuff and it's worth watching this movie for the stars and the end fight alone and it's one of them endings where it could have easily gone on for another 10 minutes 10 15 minutes or so um, and it would have been you know it would have made me very happy you know sometimes in sort of kung fu movies there's sometimes there's too much fighting and sometimes you have a really good fight happening or the end especially the, like the cl like the climax of the film and you think oh just another five more minutes but this is it's quite it's not too long um it's, it's not one minute it's not too brief but it just could have been longer um yu yi beats master kyo and says he wants to kill his old family so chung is torn between whether his allegiance lays between his sort of his master or his dad and then it becomes master versus student now and of course once Chung gets the final blow the film sort of abruptly ends as they often do but it's a great I won't spoil too much there but it's a great kung fu movie it's not a classic I'm not saying these films are a classic but it's a firm 
firm, solid kung fu movie and it's a firm favourite of mine. And it's just highly enjoyable. A bit talky, as I mentioned, in places, but still worth checking out for Wilson Tong, Fong Hak On, Angela Mao, Bola Young, and some really great choreography. And don't forget Lobster Style as well. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you again soon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory.